Oh, welcome to Mum's Memorial. Okay, do you want us to mute our microphone? I think you can see everything okay. Just yeah. Yeah. Get up and... Yeah. We, should we mute our microphone? And then I will put it on the speeches. Yeah, you guys okay there? Okay. Can, if you can just mute, I'm just gonna mute you. There we go. Love you. Did he have fun? 
And besides, I was very fortunate to have a furry diamond. But you know, I'd like to ask to my daughter, Linda and Barbara, who wish to talk about their mother. messages to read out from people around the world. And this is just a few memories from Auntie Maury. Um, that's mom's cousin, but they grew up as sisters. And our cousin, uh, Leslie and Julian. Brenda was a very young woman when her dad died. Back in those days, there were no widow's pension, family allowance, pretty much no help. So you turned to family. Her mom, Lily, had to go out to work, and so they moved in with Grandma and Granddad Edgerton. Seven people living in a two-up and two-down miners cottage. And so our Brenda and our Maureen, as they called each other, never just Maureen or Brenda, they were brought up as sisters, they shared everything. During the war, one day, Brenda would have a yolk of the egg, and our Maureen, the white of an egg. And then the next day, they would swap. They used to sing together mostly hymns with Granda Edgerton accompanying them on the piano. She loved amateur dramatics, and once got an award for Best Actress at Goldman's equivalent of the Oscars. Her knitting skills left a lot to be desired. Once making a cardigan for my dad that had one long sleeve and one short one with too many buttons for the amount of buttonholes. He still wore it. We do hear our Brenda's knitting skills have greatly improved over the years though. Our Brenda and our Maureen were each other's bridesmaids. She was also godmother to Leslie, a task she took almost too seriously we hear. Maureen and Brenda, no matter how far apart they lived, they were a couple of red rows of Lancashire lasses, sisters, and best friends forever. Our Brenda was funny, loyal, could have won an Olympic gold medal in a talking competition. <laughs> That's so true. And we loved her dearly. Hugs and kisses to all, Maureen, Leslie, and Judy. That's lovely. This one is from my dad's brothers in Australia, Rex, Lee, Michael, and Grace Saberton. We only had the opportunity to meet Brenda twice in person. There are fond memories of Brenda as a larger than life character, someone who, true to the spirit of Northwest England, made friends easily and with a wonderful support of her partner, to Roger and mother to Linda, Barbara, and Paul. That strong support enabled all of the family to flourish and develop in their own way. Whether it was a long distance relationship while Roger was in Europe or agreeing to move to Canada with its slightly cooler winters or supporting Linda, Barbara, and Paul to independently develop their own careers and pursuits but remaining grounded. Living to 90 was a remarkable achievement and a cause to celebrate. We think of you all who survived Brenda today and feel certain that she would want you to continue to live life to its maximum. That's from Australia. We have another one from the Saberton family, and this is from Jenny Saberton. Dear Auntie Brenda and Uncle Roger, I want you to know that you are surrounded by love and support during this difficult time. Your strength, kindness, and beautiful spirit have touched so many lives, including mine. You welcomed me so warmly to the family when I married Michael. You shared our joy when Ryan came into the world and when Ashley came back into our lives. May you find peace and comfort in the love that surrounds you. You are cherished and will always have a special place in our hearts. With love, 
Jenny, Ashley, and Ryan. So it's lovely. There's more. <laughs> this is from um, Hannah and Lily. They're my daughters, and obviously grandkids to mum and dad. This is from Lily, and they're they're here on video, um, zooming in from the UK. So give them a wave, wave back. This is from Lily. I will miss our Sunday night messenger chats, but I promise to keep them going with Granddad. I will miss our laughs and giggles. We always had so much fun together. I will miss you, but will always be in my memory. I love you, Grandma. Love, Lily. Thanks, Lily. This is from Hannah. Sorry. Okay. This is from Hannah. Grandma, I have the most wonderful memories of your visits, our weekly calls, getting your school photo ready to send to you each year. And when you visited Canada, how, oh, and when we visited Canada, how we went for a daily Tim Horton donut. <laughs> and we share half and half a maple dip and a Boston cream together. You were always so thoughtful, never missed a birthday. And my mama has kept all your cards over the years as a keepsake. I will cherish those. I love you very much. Love and Hannah. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. I just needed to you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you. And last one with the kitties. <laughs> okay. This is this is my message to my mom. So many amazing memories that come to mind about mom. I could speak all day, but I just wanted to mention a handful of personal memories. Mom's cooking was great. Growing up, we ate some typical English meals like lobbies and hot pot, which were always winners when friends came over too, which I often brought friends home from school to eat, and mom greeted them with an open house and enjoy them all. We have Claire here, who I brought home the first day of kindergarten, which scared her mom because luckily Claire had the, had the lovely telephone number. Jeremy I brought home often, which was great. And of course we have Helen Mar, <laughs> who used to basically live at our house most of the time, and, and many, many others, which was always great fun. Halloween was always super fun in our house, and Mum would also dress up for her work at the IDA pharmacy as a witch. And one year, famously, she rode her bike to work with her broom and costume, but she happened to catch the broom on her bike spoke and took a tumble. As usual, she laughed and told the great story to everyone, and it became one of those Remember that Halloween when Mom flew off her bike? <laughs> Mom and Dad were our greatest supporters in our sports. Linda in her ballet, Paul in his baseball, and me in my skating. Mom and Dad would drive me at the crack of dawn to skating practice, and Mom would put on thousands of rhinestones on our skating outfits. And you could always hear her cheering from the stands, go Barb, go Rob. Was my skating partner. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for always being my biggest supporter. After moving away from Canada in the 90s, Mom and Dad have visited me and my family in Japan and England, and we met in a few other countries to have some holidays as well, like Spain and Scotland. Always adventurous. I'll miss my phone chats with Mom and will continue chatting with her when she pops into my thoughts. She will be hugely missed. And we have way too many memories together that will never be forgotten. I love you, Mom. You're loved by us all. Thank you. Um, 
mom's life um, and what she meant to all of us. As I look around here, I say thank you so much to everyone for, for joining us and for supporting the family during this time, not only just today, but over the last number of months um, as, uh, as we've been uh, working with mom through her illness. Um, I had the wonderful um, opportunity to work with mom recently um, with St. Joe's Women's Center, and I do have something to, to tell you about that in a moment. But this morning, I woke up to the most wonderful message that I think really encapsulated mom completely. It's from a very dear friend and neighbor, Jeff Dorothy. If you want me just to pull it up. I wish you would send our sadness and condolences on the passing of your sweet and loving mother, Brenda. Brenda and your family are a core part and the source of my childhood memories and early life. I can realize how challenging this must be for you all. Paul, Barb, and I hope Roger will be able to find comfort and peace after she bravely dealt with her illness for so long. Brenda had a great Cadillac and energy that lit up our little corner of Mill Place with her welcoming greetings, capturing these moments to catch up on our lives and to give us her genuine love. She was a blessing. Please pass along my warm thoughts to you and your family from Jeff. And uh, I touched my heart to the end. St. Joe's Women's Center, um, Mom had been doing a little bit of work with them recently in, in knitting and her knitting had gotten much better. And I think that's got to do with all those hundreds of crossover sweaters that my family school in my <laughs> So on behalf of the staff, women and children at St. Joe's Women's Center, we send our deepest sympathies for the passing of your mother, Brenda. We sincerely thank Brenda for the generous and thoughtful donations of the knitted washcloths and soap packages. We cannot tell you how our women felt so valued and appreciated by the time, thought, and love that was put into the lovely handmade gifts. Even though our women did not have a chance to know Brenda thoroughly, they felt her love and compassion, and it truly brightened their day. Please know that you and your family are in our thoughts and prayers at this time. Jane and the staff of the St. Women's Center. And again, that encapsulates my mom. Doing good because she loved you. We've all known Brenda by different names, but as I look around, I think you all can capture these. We know her by Brenda, by Mum, by Grandma, by Auntie Brenda, Auntie B, Mrs. S, and the lady from the drugstore with the Scottish accent. <laughs> <laughs> and funny enough, three of the lovely ladies that were at the hospice said exactly the same thing. That's the lady from the drugstore with the Scottish accent that we're looking at. So that was, a, that was a, an interesting conversation in the, in the, the kitchen. I want to briefly speak about two qualities that have stood out for me as I think back on, on our lives and my mom's life. My mom always had time for you no matter what she was doing. She would turn off the TV, turn down the radio, and more often than not, put on a cup of tea and be present with you. And if you were lucky enough to be the one of Christy, who has, had passed a while ago, she would bring out the gin and tonic instead of tea. <laughs> it's a rare quality these days in our fast-paced lives, and I will cherish that quality about her. Mom gave up her time selflessly by helping out extensively in her children's activities, in particular with the Canada Valley School, Girl Guides, and Roller Skating. And I'm hoping this afternoon that you join us we're going to hear lots of stories about the ballet school, girl guides and camping, and roller skating, because there's so many stories to be told. She canvassed endlessly for cancer for decades and was a longtime member and president with the Engineers Lives Association. Most recently, as mentioned, she had been knitting washcloths for the women's, uh, uh, St. Joe's Women's Center, and she made lifelong friends in regards of what role she took on. When I reflect on all the things that our mother put her hand to, it's a long, long list. Mother, friend, store manager, seamstress, guide leader, community volunteer, 
hamper cook teacher, knitter, gardener, hairdresser, housekeeper, taxi driver, <laughs> florist, painter, ballroom dancer, travel advisor, just to name a few. And she took those all on with a can-do and just-do attitude. That was Brenda. In honor of all things that Brenda has put her hand to, I would like to take the opportunity to read from Proverbs 31 31. Honor her for all her hands have done, and let her work bring her praise at the gates. The gates are open for mom. There's lots of wonderful people waiting for her, and I know through our prayers together that she was looking forward to me and her maker as well. Thank you so much for joining us, and we hope to see you all this afternoon and share lots of wonderful stories and happy times with Brenda. Well, thank you, Linda and Baba, for that offer she showed you that friendship for your mother, my love for your mother, all over those years, and we shed it today. Uh, I'll let you mix around for a little while, not too long, and then we're all going to walk to the memorial wall, and uh, then we'll walk from the road into the memorial wall. So I'll give you say 10 minutes, is that okay? You can never mingle, talk to one another, and I'll get there for you all done. Okay. Okay, thank you everybody. Let me just walk you around and then you can see Mum's urn. Hi, Auntie Maureen. <coughs> there we go. Oh, that's lovely. So we are just going to um, chat and then go out to the memorial wall where I'm gonna lose the Wi-Fi. So if, uh, do you want me to just stop this now? That might be the best thing and then I'll have a recording which I'll send to everybody, okay? Okay, love you all, bye, bye. <laughs>